my website right now and download my free course on alternate picking mastery. It contains five essential exercises that will take you to alternate picking mastery faster than you can imagine. And then I've included my method of how to lay out a practice plan in just one to two minutes that will absolutely boost your results like nothing you ever tried before. So go download it right now. It's free. What looper pedal should you choose uh, when you practice? And the first thing I should say is that get a looper pedal. If you don't have one already, get it. And if you have one and you're not using it, use it every single day. Make that a rule to always use your looper pedal every single day. When you sit down to practice, use it. Because the ability to create something and then to play over it afterwards is just uh, fundamental and you, to, you need to practice that, even if it's just one chord you're playing. <coughs> also, if you're having a hard time with anything, like playing over a high tempo track or playing over that chord change, then you can take two chords and then just extract them from the whole, from the whole progression, and then have them run over and over again in the background just by playing it. At two seconds it takes you just to stomp that thing, get the loop little down, and then practice it over and over again. Then you can add a chord. It, it, it gives you the power to, to separate things out and then to practice them. It's, it's such a good thing. Uh, such a useful tool. So what am I using? That's the question below one of these YouTube videos. And I should say, if you have any questions for me, then please post them and I will answer them in future videos. I'm using a Boss, B-O-S-S, -S, if you haven't heard that. Uh, and you can, I think it's Boss US, uh, the, the website. Digital Delay DD7, it's quite old now, but it has a hold function. You can turn it, instead of using delay, I can, I can turn it to a hold function and that turns it into a looper. But there's no save function. So all my loops just disappear the second I stop them, which I really like because it's the simplest thing ever, right? Other looper pedals can have different, you can save your loops. So you can have up to 100 loops saved and you can, you know, uh, go back and forth between them. And, and But that's all too complex for me. I want simplicity because I want the distance between an idea, practicing something, and then practicing that idea to be as short as possible. And I don't want to have to press little buttons, just play the thing again, right? And if you have to play the whole loop again, it makes you even better at playing rhythm, whatever it is that you do. So I really like this little machine and it can do delay as well if you need that. Um, but there are other uh, uh, pedals out there, some of them more simple than others. Some have really advanced uh, features. And if you're into sitting down, you know, Boss does another looper pedal that has rhythm in it and all kinds of uh, cool features. And if you really like to sit down, read the manual, make, you know, be, become familiar with all the different features, and it, it, you can get to the point where it feels easy to operate this complex thing, then by all means, I think you should buy one. But if you're not that kind of person, if you just, you know, you leave all the features, you get sold on all the features, so you buy the thing, and then you don't really have the time or you don't have the interest, the passion to go into all of that. I used to have, uh, because I, I was all into, I had my Paul Gilbert uh, period, right, where I was uh, looking up to him very much. Uh, for good reasons, I might say. Uh, but I, that made me buy you know, a couple of stacks um, loudspeakers. But then I, instead of having a top on that stack, I had like a, a preamp, a programmable pre preamp. And that was so complex. And then I had an effects rack underneath that in a rack on, on top of and, you know, pedals and all. And I'm not a tech guy. I'm not the, the kind of person who's really, uh, who really wants to, to spend a lot of time uh, getting acquainted with that. So I didn't use it. I just basically sp spent half an hour being confused about what it does and then figuring out some kind of way of producing something that's okay, right? And a sound I like. So, but I warmly recommend, if you're not into a lot of tech stuff, to buy a, a looper pedal. You can also buy a very cheap one. Behringer uh, makes very cheap looper pedals. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how expensive it is. For me, I have a preference. It should be simple to operate, and I don't care how much it costs because it doesn't matter. You're not going to record an album using your looper pedal, right? You're not going to perform using your looper pedal, and if you are, you can perform using a cheap looper pedal that costs, you know, half of, of the, the, the most expensive ones. And people won't notice the difference anyway. 
But you know how it is, right? Sometimes we want to spend that extra and feel that we have something of great quality in a metal casing and all of that. You know, that's fine anyway. But if you don't have a looper pedal and your excuse is, I don't have the money, then go buy a cheap used one. I don't care, just get one uh, as, as fast as you can and then use it every day. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.